the special advisor uh, to the president on special duties, communication and strategy, Mr. Dele Alake, said that by today, 7 p.m., there will be a national address by the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, the broadcast will be 7 p.m. for everybody to join in to hear what he has to say. Um, Nigerians are expectant because we'd like to see or hear what the President has in store. But this morning right now, we'd like to open our phone lines to hear from Nigerians. What are your expectations? We've had this President remove subsidy from his first speech, mm. floated the Naira, uh, offered an 8,000 Naira palliative, revoked it and said it to be reviewed. And then we've had promises of various um, policies at some point to help um, alleviate the, the hardship incurred on Nigerians. And then he came up with the ministerial list. So many things the president has said. So what are your expectations at 7 p.m. tonight? That's our conversation today. Um, should I start with the ladies or start with our, let me start with our guests? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so, so for me, um, I mean, in the last couple of weeks, so I've been in Nigeria for two weeks now. Mm. And, um, you know, I've said that the most important thing for me right now is for the palliatives to get directly to the people. You know, so we have, um, there's the state government, there's the local government, and the majority of the state governors are anti-LG autonomy. I mean, that's a different issue. But I think it is a bit challenging to expect that the federal government will go to, you know, every corner of the country. So the state governors are in the best position to actually, and I mean, working with the local government as well, you know, to ensure that the, the palliatives, whatever the state government, whatever plans the state government has, whatever plans the federal government has, that it gets to the people directly. Let's because what happens palliative. in this country mm. is that when the government wants to do something, then politicians and elected leaders, they, they corner like 30 or 50 percent of these things, then the poor people start to grumble. Mm. What I've seen is people are really in need, and these people need some sort of succor, and they need it urgently. Let's talk about what palliative, let's define palliative, because sometimes it's a broad word. Mm. Government said 8,000 naira, mm -hmm. but to an individual, maybe that's nothing. So maybe we need to really define what palliative is. Is it transportational palliative where you enter transport for free? Is it where you get food subsidy where you go to the market and they give you food for free? What exactly do we need? Because government was even suggesting 25,000 naira for labor. They're saying that they're going to increase. Is this civil service? 25,000 yeah. naira extra. And they're saying we're rejecting it. What, what we want is this to go back to normalcy. So what, let us define palliative. What do, what, how do we understand palliative and what we want government to do exactly to be palliative? Yeah, so I think it's... so. There's the, there's the long term, you know, so there are things that the government needs to do on the long term. On the short term, you know, free transport. I mean, when I was growing up in Abuja, we had urban mass transit. Mm. Now Lagos State has BRT, you know, and some other states have some certain arrangements. Free transport for people, civil servants, if they get 10,000 naira monthly, on t extra on whatever they get, you know, until the end of this year, which comes up to about 60,000 Naira, fertilizer subsidies, you know, these are some of the things that, you know, that government actually needs to do. I mean, I've actually got, got a, li a long list of, you know, I shared a tweet a couple of days ago now, welcome more investors, which will lead to more jobs, increase minimum wage immediately, manage inflation, invest in human capital, which will increase our skills level and the jobs, create an enabling environment, which will lead to jobs, Invest more in the informal sector, Taylor, uh, uh, Okada, all these things. You know, all of these guys, you can actually scale up, you know, their, their businesses, reduce the cost of governance. Again, the people can see yes. all of the Prado and Lexus that you are driving, your fine dresses on Instagram, your children going abroad. They can see all of these things. They can see all of these things. Um, so I, I sort of, I sort of, um, I have a bit of divergent view from what you're supporting as palliatives, and I feel that um, yes, palliative is a short-term um, yeah. solution to support a challenging situation. And for me, what I would call a palliative in this in this case shouldn't be a cash transfer to anybody, mm. not for civil servants, not for the poor of the poor, because we know what how it goes with. Um, cash. cash transfers and how we, um, mm. and how we would be looking for the 
even with all the, all, the, all, the, all the vetting that has gone through all civil service, we still find dead people collecting salaries. We find people that have jackpot collecting salaries. Ghost workers still show up. So I feel like anything cash shouldn't be done. But there's a system that has worked in other countries. What people need is food. If, if we can eat, we can, people can sleep anywhere, you know, if they can eat. One of the basic things, because we don't, we don't have survival without food. That's the number one need every human being has that we can't do without. Mm. And many Nigerians right now cannot afford to buy food. So if we're providing food... Um, how, how, how do we provide how, food? how I would love food to be provided is that Nigerians are, are extremely religious. Everybody in Nigeria worships somewhere. Mm. And other developed countries have found that that's a way to provide social intervention is to partner with food existing, not, not cooked, raw. Okay. So we're giving raw food. Okay. And that will stimulate the economy in a different way. But you still it is, need the we have, no, let me just, uh, we, it will stimulate the economy in that farmers are already having issues with what's the value of our food? How mm. do we get our food out? So the government is buying out food. We're buying out rice, mm. buying out potatoes, and we're sharing it to people. Mm. That no matter how, where you find yourself, you can go to your local government and get a bag, a bag of rice. I will sign, I've collected this small bag of rice and beans, yeah. and I know that I have food for my family all through. And, or world level, mm. or like, you, that's I small cocoon. Yes. For me, if we can channel palliatives through food, mm. we, the government will fund the community, mm. will fund farmers, and will feed the nation, okay. and there's no argument on it is important to everyone to get food. Let me come to you on that. I completely, I completely agree. But again, you are going to rely on mm. government officials and fellow Nigerians. Ah, that was good. That so was my, my, my key point, and the next on my list was, you know, stabilize, uh, stabilize food prices. That was the next on my list. You know, address poverty head on. We are still going to deal with Nigerians in our churches, in our mosques, yes. in it's our uh, in far worship, whatever. Our house, our family members. Like what happened in the IDP camp. We are still going to deal with fellow I'm Nigerians. So the thing is, we have to find a way to ensure that when they give me 100 naira to give to the people, yes. I don't corner half of it exactly. and it ends up in a warehouse somewhere that yes. people now have to go and attack. Exactly. So if it is churches, mosques, whatever, local government, ward level, let it get to the people. So this is not about government intervention now. It's about the people taking responsibility of whatever it is. So even if, if people are faithful to the 8,000 Naira, and I make sure it gets everybody. Maybe it will work. Yes. But unfortunately, because we're not okay. faithful, now you're saying, let's take the physical food to Nigerians. We know our people. We know ourselves. The transporter, the transporter himself would <laughs> stop by Sis, in his village I and know. drop 50% before he now gets to Lagos. You know, these are, these are our people. Mm, yeah. Whether we like to believe it or not. Yes. Wow. So how then do we fix our... So we, how do we I think we need, to make, we, need to make, we need to make examples of people Hey. So if you, no have, enforcement. If, if you have done something, you know, they've told you to go and give food worth 200,000 naira to people. IDP camps. IDP, people steal from IDP camps. I'm How wicked you. can you be that you're stealing from people who are internally displaced? Yeah. They have no home. It's the height of wickedness. So if you can make example of a few people, you know, and put processes and systems in place to discourage I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how exactly. Let me but... take Nima. Nima. Nima is in her house. <laughs> any comments? Says that I disagree with religious centers. Oh, mm. TDS are better. So that's one person saying you can't trust religious I, I, centers. Like I put all of them. <laughs> so, mm, but, yeah, so again, I mean, I was, as much as go ahead, Maria. Yes, let me I was also going to say, you know, giving of food directly. That's also a group of Nigerians. Mm. There are some people that that's not what they need. That's not what will help them like getting that food. What they will need is they are going to work and they want transportation cost. Yes to be taken out or mm. subsidized. Yeah. So um, I think it should be a culmination yes. mix of yeah. the different yeah. palliatives. So food would, maybe the very poor of the poor, you know, they are mm. unable, these are people who even in a regular economy yeah. are getting food from one, you know, they are, they are, they are really, so really poor, either they don't have a job or they don't yeah. even have where they are living. So that will work. But there's also that level of poverty where it's not that food. But we want to go to work. Yes. We cannot. We're only able to eat for today. I have my Okada. I will get on my Okada. I will do my business. But after today's, um, you know, and you're now taking subsidy out. So now to buy petrol for that, my Okada is a problem. But I can yeah. work. You know, I, I don't need to go and stand on a queue for food. Mm. What kind of help would that Okada man need? So I'm a hairdresser. Case. No problem. You have increased price of 
petrol. I used to put on my gen. Yes. I want to do my business. Impact, if I go yeah. to do my business, how would you know those are the things? So where would so, so the sort of palliatives those people need is not food. Yeah. It is in subsidized electricity. Yes. Yeah. It is in subsidized, I don't know. Transportation. Yeah. Oh, because, no, because because that's that, long term. So the truth is that just like you said. They, they, they will have to diversify. So, for example, yeah. the Okada rider can say, I can't take Okada right now because I can't afford fuel. But I can do a different kind of business or I can get a different kind of job. And he now has to transport himself there. So, mm -hmm. if, if government either acquire these buses or try, because I know that, um, I was told that um, some, some churches actually rent government buses on Sundays to bring people to church because mm -hmm. that is, it's part of their own palliative to help yeah. members get to church. I'm hearing that some churches in Abuja will get government to give them the buses. So these are buses that are available. Can we have these buses on the road where people don't have pay or maybe they, they pay next to nothing? Yeah. To get oh, to yeah, a lot of churches have, have buses. Yes. yes. And like packed during the week. A lot of churches, have, churches do buses. have buses. Not all churches are buoyant like no, that. In, in, I'm, but I'm not saying all. Yeah. A lot of churches have buses yeah. Yeah. and those buses are not in use. During the, for my own church, they, didn't, they, they, were going to, they bought a few and realized that why are we keeping buses mm -hmm. that were not used during the week. So they decided to sell the buses and only lease buses for Sundays, which was more a more productive approach. But some churches do have buses mm -hmm. branded and they could, they could work in um, conjunction with the government to say, government will fill the bus. The bus can be used by government to provide transportation mm -hmm. for free for people yeah. on the, within the days well, that, of the well, week. That, that's yeah. private helping government. Yeah. For government, I, I feel free transportation will work very well. Or transport yeah. voucher. Um, I know that um, states... States are making, uh, giving some days off during the week. Yeah. So you don't have to go to work, work every two days. Yeah. Yeah. Three days, I think. Yeah. So those are the different sort of palliative. But, you know, this conversation has brought it right back to our uh, doorstep now as Nigerians. Really the people. part that we play in making sure that the distribution of palliatives is done right. Yeah. Yeah. We have blamed government for its corruption, yeah. and it is true. But there's also a corruption that we have and we Absolutely. play amongst ourselves. Absolutely. When are we going to address it? Yes. And how do we plan on addressing okay. it? Okay, we'll come to that because I want you to also talk about the uh, ministerial appointments, your thoughts on mm. that. Um, because, as I said, the president had made an appoint so a few appointments in batches. So Labour Party, I saw in the papers this morning, said that, first of all, is it even legal mm. for you to be in batches? Means. I mean, they're still going to look for um, the legal, um, to whatever, to see how if they can take... Um, the, the, the president to court on this. That's one end. They're also saying that it's some recycled politicians that they were expecting technocrats and people who are um, really, really business oriented to, to, to be part of this um, list. In your thoughts, what, are you, what, what do you think about the list of yeah, the ones so, that we've seen so far? First of all, I mean, I, I recently resigned as a senior lecturer. So I am a lecturer. Uh, I've been a lecturer in the last 10, 12 years. Okay. I don't know anything about law, so <laughs> I'll let Labour Party, you know, go and do whatever they want to do. But the point here is, uh, the list that I saw, you know, had very good people. You know, Dili, there's Dili Alaki, there's Latif Fagbemi, you know, there's yeah. um, Nasir Erufai, you know, there's some, I mean, you could say more politicians than technocrats, yeah. but some of them are also technocrats, and some of them are technocrats and politicians. So it depends on what, what, what lens you're actually viewing them from. Um, I understand there's, there's going to be a second, a second list at some point in Just time. Just people more, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully we get, we get a mixture. I mean, very good women on here as well. Um, Anatu, um, Beta, Edu, you know. So it's a, it's a mixture of, you know, we could argue about, oh, is it, do we have enough technocrats? Do we have enough women? Oh, can he send it in batches? You know, all of those. For me... The most important thing is get these people in the right ministries to solve our many problems. Mm. Because we don't have that much time to mess about and, you know, play around. Learn on the job. The people who get whatever ministries, who get appointed, please get the best competent hands and do your job. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then we are all in trouble. So this next batch that we're expecting, do you hope that the president picks technocrats or still rely on politicians? I mean, I, so because of my bias, <laughs> I would say more technocrats. <laughs> but I know that, you know, this folks who are, uh, you know, party, party members and politicians might actually disagree with me. But do you think it was a, it was a reward for party loyalists? Because that was part of the conversation that ah, this is... 
Me say, ah, thank you, Wiki. Oh, God bless you. I yeah, take. You did well. Ah, you did well. Wiki, take. Mm -hmm. I replied, good boy. So you should have asked that. I want you to ask him, what do you think of a Wiki on the list? Oh, wow. Wiki, ah, this is putting me on the spot. Personally, I, I, like, I like Wiki as a person. Um, no affiliations to PDP whatsoever. But I just like him. I like his band. I think he delivered for the people in River State. Um, they call him Mr. Project. Some of their people disagree, but hey, this is what you know politics is. Dave, Dave Umani as well in Eboi. Yeah. Um, Umahi. Uma, Uma, Umahi. Umahi. Yeah, I think he you know he has some projects as well. Um, I, I think they are they are they are, they, they are worthy to be on the list. Mm. Okay, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue our conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.